My name's Mary Wareham. I'm the Advocacy Director in the Arms Division at Human Rights Watch. I'm also the coordinator of the global campaign to stop killer robots. The campaign to stop killer robots is a new coalition of non-governmental organizations that's organizing itself. The campaign, we came together at the end of 2012 to form the campaign and we launched it in London in April 2013. Right now, it's about 60 NGOs in about two dozen countries, but they have reach into many different parts of the world. So the campaign is, is the coordinated response by non-governmental organizations to what we see as the challenges posed by autonomous warfare. The call of the campaign to, ban, to stop killer robots is for a preemptive ban on the development, production, and use of what we call fully autonomous weapons. We're concerned with two aspects of autonomy here, with the selection of a target and the use of force, lethal uh, or otherwise. At the moment, with a drone that's an in-the-loop weapon, there's still humans uh, who are directing and who are taking the decision when it comes to selecting a target that has been found uh, by the drone on the video feed, uh, and there's also a human involved in the decision to fire at the target and to use force. Our concern is with what might happen when those two, two acts are, are no longer undertaken by a human, uh, but by a computer program, by the weapon itself, by the autonomous weapon. It's not just uh, airborne systems that uh, concern us. There are ground-based platforms, and we understand under the ocean as well, on the sea, uh, that these systems are being, being, being looked at. And autonomous systems and warfare can bring many benefits. We talk to the military about the different uses that autonomy has. It's just the points at which it gets weaponized and the points at which the human is no longer involved in the selection of target and the use of force, that's what we want to be discussing in our campaign to stop killer robots. The discussions at the United Nations this year in 2015, we expect will be quite similar to the first set of talks back last year in 2014, are pretty introductory because this is a brand new topic for the disarmament diplomats in Geneva. We hope, though, that they bring delegations with uh, experts from the military, from science, from robotics, from elsewhere within government who can contribute at the meeting. The meeting, we expect, will follow the same lines as last time and look at the technical aspects of these weapons, the operational utility uh, of them, the legal considerations. Are they legal under international humanitarian law? How does human rights law uh, fit into this. And our overarching concern for the campaign has to do with the ethics of the systems and the, the very notion of are we okay with you know, giving the decision to select a target and to use force to a machine to, to undertake. So those are the kind of big picture, big picture issues that we're concerned about and we hope that that's all on the table at the discussions in Geneva in April. The nations that are participating, 87 nations showed up last year in 2014. We hope to see a similar number participate, but we've got to move beyond the information stage and the question stage and into the policy stage where countries are, are articulating what their views are on the call for a ban, on the call for regulation, on the, on, the, on the interpretation of international law, on all of the different aspects under this. I think many are playing a bit of a wait and see at the moment. They want to see how the talks go and then they'll formulate their policy. But something's got to go first here, and we know that to make change at the international level, you have to have the national uh, policy and action and interest. This work on autonomous weapons is not just an esoteric discussion. This is about a technology that's on the drawing board that is actively being discussed that some would like to pursue. And we're saying it's not an inevitable technology. We need to have a debate about the merits and the desirability of that technology. And the future is in our hands. We as humans control our destiny here and we can make an impact and draw up the rules for future warfare uh, in a way that hopefully will help protect and save civilian lives much more so than we see right now.